This is interview with uh, Benjamin White. He's a Barry Bonds collector, and he dabbles in. Uh, you you collect a couple of other things too, right, Ben? Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much any baseball. You know, if I see a good deal, I pick it up. I like the '90s cards and you know, Griffey, Jeter. Uh, you know, whatever catches the eye. I don't like the Bonds is my primary focus, but I have uh, yeah, I have a collection of lots of other uh, baseball stars too. Excellent. Nothing extensive as Bonds, though, of course. So excellent, excellent. Again, thanks again for t sitting down with me today. I'm really, really happy about this. This is gonna be fun. Um, I want to start things off just getting a background of you. Uh, this is something I've asked people before, but at what age did you start collecting baseball cards? Uh, probably about five or six. You know, I had a, a neighbor friend. Uh, he was probably five, six years older than me, and he uh, he collected. He kind of got me into it. We actually had a neighborhood card shop down the block, probably a couple blocks away. It was really convenient. So. You know, it was back in the uh, late 80s when, you know, baseball cards were kind of at their height. Um, so there was a lot of shops around. Uh, so I'd say probably pretty early age. Uh, don't have many of those cards left. They're all damaged. And, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's how I got started. When did you start collecting Barry Bonds? Uh, Bonds wasn't until 98. 1998, I focused. Uh, that's really when all these you started getting all these products coming out. There was just product after product at Pacific with all their Pacific probably had 20 products by themselves and then you have Don Ross um, so I think at that point I decided I wanted to narrow my focus to one player and uh, you know Bonds was a five tool player um, it was just before he uh, got involved in the whole PED scandal so as far as I knew at that point he was a clean player and uh, not a lot of, there wasn't a lot of uh, Still not a lot of hobby uh, excitement about him, uh, so I figured he was someone I could build an extensive collection with, uh, with without you know having a chance to really build a, a big collection. You know, Griffey, even Thomas. There's so many collectors; it's hard to you know you have a lot of competition. Are you pretty good friends with the other Barry Bonds collectors? Uh, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of them. Uh, I, I know a couple. Um, I, I know one that actually sold out his collection a couple of years ago. I bought a lot of cards from him. Um, I know one guy who's, I believe he's probably about 20 years older than me. He's from Pittsburgh, started collecting around Bond's rookie year. He just has an insane collection. He's probably has the best collection I know of. But uh, there's not too many I know uh, personally. I don't know if they they don't like come out of the woodwork, or there's just not that many. But uh, I know they're out there. I know a couple, but uh, probably not all of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, I'm sort of jumping around here, but, um, you know, one of the early questions I could ask you is, that, what do you like co about collecting baseball cards? Like, what's the one thing that draws you to it? Uh, I, I, like, uh, I like the completion. I like the, the search is what it's all about. And again, the card in hand is great, but it's the, the search you know, you could go to uh, you go to a hole in the wall little card shop down the street and find a card in a dollar bin that you've been looking for for 20 years, or you can now you can go online. You got auctions. I mean, when I first started in '98 with the bonds thing, uh, I don't think I got involved with the internet probably till probably around 2000 or so. So uh, back then, you're doing your self-addressed stamped envelopes and all that money through the mail. Um, so, but yeah, I guess I get back to that. I would say just the, the search is what it's all about. And it's just, I, I guess there's kind of a, a OCD, uh, component there where you just, you want to build the best collection. You want to be as complete as possible. So I can understand that. Absolutely. It's sort of the, <laughs> the collector and all of us is in search of something new every time and right. constantly yeah. trying to create something exquisite. Um, and that, that's actually a lot of the fun. For me and I can totally understand the searching part of it is uh, definitely a big draw. Absolutely. Going to Bonds, um, when he did undergo a lot of bad branding and baggage from the PED coverage, has that had any effect on your perception of Barry Bonds? And if so, how? Um, I, I guess I wouldn't say too much because I'm still collecting him. Um, I, I understand why people don't like him. 
I understand why people are upset with the PED users. Mm -hmm. um, I don't take it personally. You know, I understand people don't like it. I also think um, he, he's really the poster boy for the whole PED scandal, him and Canseco. I mean, behind just, he, just his physical stature, he got so big. Um, but I think the way with performance enhancing drugs, I don't think they're going away. It's just, I mean, I look at it more as it's just kind of uh, history and technology and medicine evolving. I think it's actually become regulated more in sports. I just think really what it is right now is uh, obviously you want kids, kids using this stuff, but I just think I can't see it going away ever. I think that it's going to become regulated in sports. I just think, um, there's no way to really keep it out. They're always testing for new chemicals and substances. So as far as back as the 90s go, of course, there's unfair competition. Um, and we don't really know who is clean and who's dirty. There's rumors about everyone out there. Um, so I guess it hasn't changed my perception too much. Um, I understand why people are upset with him and other players. But, uh, you know, there's a whole debate about, you know, what guys would have done clean and there's a lot of bench players that use who would never, you know, come close to Bond's talent. You have to have that mix of extreme talent and I guess the chemical side too. You can't have Arnold Schwarzenegger come up there with a bat and hit, hit a home run. You know, you got to have a lot of talent too. I mean, you got guys, bench, bench player infielders that were, uh, went on the Mitchell report and they couldn't hit over 250, you know? So you know, it's, it's just a big, it's a debate all the way around. And you know, they talk about there's a guy, or there's one or two players in the hall already that were um, widely rumored to have used. So, you know, you just don't really know for sure who did and didn't unless, you know, you have positive tests. We could talk about the PED thing for forever, you know, and, and who may or may not have taken. And I think at the end of the day, you know, you, you sort of pinpointed that you have to have talent first uh, before you know, help can ever help you. So, like Barry Bonds, he was a Hall of Famer before he ever took steroids, if in fact he did take steroids. You know, let's pre, you know, in the 98s, he, he was a five-tool talent. He already was on his way to be um, in the Hall of Fame. Um, so, I, 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 even if, if he did, I don't think that he needed to um, because he was such a great talent prior. No, no, definitely didn't. Uh, he was already, if, if he did start after the 98 season has kind of been, it was kind of uh, talked about in the book Game of Shadows about uh, Bonds' use along with other players. And they said basically after the 98 season, Bonds decided this is what he's going to do. I think part of it is the, probably the egotistical nature of a, of a sports athlete wanting to be the best. And also just, um, I don't know, I guess that's really what it is when you're a professional athlete. You want to be the very best. And I just think, especially when you're a superstar like that, you know, you're always competing. You, nothing's ever good enough. So these guys are some were obviously some stay clean for what we know. Griffey was a clean player. Um, you know, obviously he had 630 home runs. So yeah, I guess some guys decided, Hey, this is, I'm going to do this. And other guys said, Hey, I'm not going to do this. So, and you know, with, with bonds, um, I think when he saw the McGuire Sosa race, he, at least, if, if you know, he might he might have thought, hey, I can do that. I can, I yeah, can do those, I, those numbers. Like, let's get some help. Yeah, but Bonds is just his his physical stature was so dramatic. He went from yeah, a lean guy stealing bases, and his stealing bases days were pretty much over after he started doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I kind of separate the man, the player, from the collecting aspect too. Like, I enjoy collecting him, and I I think he's a great player. But there's kind of there's two sides. There's the just the collecting, and then there's the uh, legacy of the player, I guess too. So I don't tie them together completely. Uh, always be a bonds collector. Uh, when you did start collecting bonds, what was your first Barry Bonds card, and how many do you have now? Um, you know, I don't know what my first one was because I was already collecting cards pretty heavily by 98. I think I was 15. So I had pretty sizable collection. I was buying boxes and I had, you know, one of my first jobs had a couple extra bucks. Uh, I remember I started with 63 cards of his. So, um, probably a lot of base cards, nothing spectacular. And, uh, so I can't put one, I can't pinpoint a first card, but I had 63 when I started in 98 
And uh, now I'm at just short of 5,500. I'm at 54.99. Um, I have one coming from eBay, so that'll uh, put me at even number uh, next couple days. Congratulations. Thanks. That's a big number. It takes a long time to get to the brick to 5,000 milestone. How do you catalog your progress? As a collector, a lot of us, you know, we'll use Excel. Some of us use Google uh -huh. Sheets. What's your primary method for that? I, Excel is definitely the way to go. Um, I have actually have an old school Microsoft Word document where I actually would just type them all in. I still have that. So I have that electronically. I would like to go Excel. Definitely that's easier way to keep track of it, do searches, things like that. And I also have a, a binder, a paper binder with me. I might show, I think I might show you at the National. Um, so I highlight what I have uh, in the binder. Uh, so when I go to shows and things like that, I can keep track of it. Um, so yeah, I have a paper and a, uh, digital, I'm kind of old school with, I, when I, the way I do a lot of things too, I kind of like having the, the paper actual binder. Yeah. Uh, do the same thing with my reading too. I have, I like to have the books. I'm not a Kindle guy. So what are some of your favorite yeah. cards? And well, can, actually, you, can you show some? Here, yeah. I have, uh, of course, if you talk about nineties collectors, you have the crusades always come up. So here I have the uh, you get a good view. You have the green, green and the purple. And yeah. purple. Yeah. Of course, I need the red. That's on a lot of player collectors' uh, want lists. Um, so definitely would like to get that one day. Of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, here's one of the first oh, big nine yeah. sensors. You have the elite. Donruss Elite 91. You know what's funny about that product is I, I must have opened up. Boxes and boxes and boxes of 91 Donruss when it came out and never pulled a single Elite. And I was always shocked by the 10,000 serial numbering. Thinking at that time that was considered rare. Just think about right. the total output for the base cards if 10,000 is considered rare. <laughs> I think they're probably running the presses 24-7 for an entire year on that. Yeah. All, all those products in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, I just have a whole stack of, I have a lot of, Pacific had a lot of uh, oh, yeah. uh, rare cards, so I'll just kind of go through a few. This is number to 10, this is the full count. This actually I got for buy it now, uh, I think like $10, $15. Um, every wow. once in a while, as you find people put buy now prices up and uh, can't wait to click the buy now, so... I'll just run through a few of these. I just uh, yeah. have to talk about every single one, but you can kind of recognize some of these 90s. That's a tough one. Parallels. That score reserve collection is very, very difficult. Which one's that one? Right, right. right that's the one you just showed. Here's one that uh, took me quite a while. Just got this last year. Oh, the gold uh, electric diamond. Right. Those are very, very hard to find. Um, this I picked up a few months ago. This was definitely probably one of my top cards now, favorite. Oh, Patches. yeah. Strong, so, strong card. I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, special FanFest cards. Yeah. Used at the FanFest. Those are great, aren't they? Destroyed. So. I love them. I love the, uh. I love the oddballs almost as much as the tough inserts too, because those can be the regional oddballs can be just as tough as low numbered inserts. Um, Absolutely. Those. Uh, I wish I had a couple here. I was going to show. Um, I'm sure with that, any player collector, uh, there's different ones. This is from a TV station. Real wow. basic design. I think it's from '93. I just got this uh, maybe six months ago. Guy out of California had it. And a real basic card, but I didn't even know it existed. It's from some TV station back in the, I think from 93. Have you done research on that card and discovered its rarity since then? I had it on my checklist. I got a checklist from another Bonds collector probably almost 15 years ago. And he, it was, it, this is why I still have it, that paper uh, checklist, because it had a lot of oddball issues on it. So... I had it listed, I just didn't know what it looked like, and eventually it popped up. So for me, it's really rare. Um, oftentimes on eBay, those don't sell for a lot because people just aren't interested in them. There's only so many bonds collectors out there. Um, so I didn't pay a whole lot for it, but to me, it has it holds a lot of value because I just, I never saw it for, since 98. So for me, it's extremely rare. There's actually, 
1993 California Highway Patrol card I'm looking for from a team set, Giants team set. I can't find it anywhere. I have another bonds collector friend of mine who lives out in the Bay Area, and he, he's been looking at card shops for it. You know, the thing is, it's probably sitting in a dollar box somewhere at a shop, and uh, I can't find it for the life of me. So, um, so as with many extensive collections, like, you know, your collection, you know, other player collectors' collections, there's like thousands of, and thousands of, 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 of units. Um, a lot of times we pick a focus. Do you focus on anything specifically? I, I go for it all. Uh, I'm OCD. I collect non-card items. I also really enjoy collecting the magazines. I have over 100 magazines, bonds on the cover. Um, bag those up. Um, yeah, pretty much whatever I can get my hands on. I have bobbles, newspapers, uh, pins. Uh, so really my focus is pretty wide. Um, if it has bonds on it, I pretty much I want it. I'm trying to build a pretty extensive collection. And that's just my, I guess that's just how I am. I'm just very uh, OCD that way. I enjoy the search and the collecting aspect of it. So I guess there isn't really a lot of focus. It's just if I need it, I'm going to try to get it. If it's within my budget. Are there any specific memorabilia pieces that you're after? Yeah, there's actually, uh, <laughs> it's a, a rubber bat. Um I guess you would call it it's a, a rubber mat picture with Bond's likeness on it. It's like a, I guess you would describe it as like a photo. Um, it's I believe it's around 18 by 24, and it's uh, yeah, a rubber-backed photo mat. It's supposed to hang on the wall. Uh, I know one Bond's collector has one. Um, he hasn't been willing to budge on it yet. He no longer collects Bond's, but he has a lot of his memorabilia yet, but he uh, hasn't been willing to sell it yet. So that's one of those weird oddball items that I'm trying to acquire. Wow. How did you find out about that piece? Well, he had it. He sent me a picture. So I have a picture in my uh, documents so I can kind of reference it. But uh, that's where I really, that's where the search comes in. I really enjoy finding stuff. You do a search on eBay and like you never knew it existed. And, you know, I just, that's kind of the fun aspect. We When you talk to other people that are collectors and they see some of the weird stuff you have in your collection that always kind of throws people for a loop that's kind of uh, exciting. A lot of us player collectors have, you know, what we feel are perhaps the most difficult cards to track down. Um, are there one or two cards you feel that, that you're still looking for that you've had either no luck even seeing or you see and they're out of your price range or just certain cards that come to mind that you're still searching for that you wish they're on like your top five or top three list? Uh, absolutely. Um, I would say the 97 Pinnacle Inside Diamond Edition. Uh, those were 1 in 63 They came in the can. 1 in 63 odds of pulling any one random card from the set. Um, I have a stock photo that was the card sold on Check Out My Cards at some point, so that's stock photo from them. But I haven't seen another one. I'd be willing to pay a lot of money for that card. Um, as of a couple years ago, one of my big top wants was the... 98 UD Retro Quantum Leap. I uh, finally got that. Buy it now price came up and I picked it up right away. So got that now. Um, Isn't of course, that an incredible say, set? Yeah, you know, it's, it's just a really a gaudy um, 90s insert. Um, the has kind of a microchip design. So I just really like that card. And for being numbered to 50, it's extremely rare. You just. It came again. It came in a unique package. It came in the lunch boxes, so I think a lot of product probably didn't get opened. Um, so I'm sure a lot of them are still sealed. So I, yeah, one of my favorites. Oh, the Crusade, of course. I mean, I could. It's on eBay, so it's acquirable if I'm willing to shell out a lot of money for it. Right. Nice thing about Bonds is that he really hasn't had any issues after 2007. Um, he has some Panini stuff come on the last couple of years I've picked up, but that's the nice thing I've been able to catch up. Um, starting in 2004, he started branding his own name, so uh, there wasn't his issues. Started 2004, really started going down. Um, 2000, 2005 and forward, it was only Tops who licensed him, um, so there wasn't a lot of cards for him. So I've been able to catch up, uh, whereas other players, uh, even after they retired, they have issue after issue coming out. So for me, it's been nice. I've been able to catch up. Interesting that the diamond edition is in your top wants. It's it's you know it's not serial numbered, 
I mean, there are a couple other 90s parallel sets that were not serial numbered, but because of that, they kind of fly under the radar. By not serial numbering some of the cards in the 90s, um, they made it affordable for collectors to acquire certain things because of the perceived undervalue of the cards due to the non-serial numbering. And I think that the diamond editions are in that category. They're extremely tough to find and very rare, but they're not serial numbered. And I think that the knowledge on how hard they are to find is, is maybe not as common as one might think. Right, they also had the uh, die cut edges on the side and they came in a can, metal can product, so there's probably a lot of uh, condition sensitive cards involved with those too. Um, who knows how many are real mint. I'd be willing to take any copy I could find right now. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, here's another one, uh, oh, 98 yeah. score moment. Um, this is supposedly uh, 30 sets made. Again, that's serial numbered. So, yeah, there's a lot of that stuff that, um, yeah, didn't get numbered and, uh, yeah, I jump around, but here's, here's the gold artist proof. I got this a few months ago. Oh, you picked that one up? Okay, good. I got it for starting bid. Um, so again, there's, uh, I know there's bonds collectors out there, but, uh, surprisingly I didn't have any competition on it. Uh, but then again, other bonds cards go for a lot of money too. So, um, you know, if there weren't. Any other bonds clutches out there, I'd be able to acquire a lot more and have uh, a lot bigger budget. But um, I know they're out there. They're just uh, kind of secretive. Do you collect anyone else? And if so, why? Um, yeah, a lot of uh, 90s, early 2000 players. Um, I have binders of pretty much all major stars. Um, kind of like to stay organized that way. Um, Jeter, Griffey. Um, I have a couple other random. Here's a Jeter uh, Redemption autograph card. This is wow. when you pull out a pack and you would redeem this through the auto. Um, here's this uh, the back here. Um, so yeah, I guess I just dabble around. I don't like to. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I might have posted that earlier. Um, yeah, a lot of A rods too. Um, I love that set. Yeah, I think, like I said, Bonds hasn't had a lot of issues over the last 10 years or so. There's a Tiffany from 97. Oh, nice. Um, so, yeah, I like to I dabble around, and I, you know, pretty much any star I keep uh, organizing binders. I bought uh, a case of pages, sheets, and I organize them all in binders. So, um, yeah, I, I like to dabble around, especially to check out my cards now. You can... Um, search for a lot of different uh, things. So, yeah, I guess I'm, I, uh, I'm all over the board sometimes, yeah. That's excellent. If you weren't collecting Barry Bonds as a like a, your main guy, mm -hmm. who would you be collecting and why? Hmm. Who would you be PCing if you weren't PCing Barry Bonds? No, it's hard to say. Like, I like Griffey and Jeter. It's just it's not feasible to really have a, build a great collection of them. Um, I like Jordan, but there's no possible way I'm paying five yeah, figures for exactly, card number yeah. 50. <laughs> yeah, for me, it would have to be someone that I could build a really extensive, great collection of. That's why I like Bonds, is that although he's still a very high mainstream star, I've still been able to acquire a lot of his cards. For me, if I can't build a really great, absolute one of the best collections possible, I don't want to do it. So I wouldn't want to collect someone that's a huge star like that. It'd have to be someone more of a semi star. Um, so I guess I'd probably, I guess, maybe, uh, Griffey or Jeter, um, but there's a lot of guys that like Gwen too. Gwen was a, um, role model, great player. You have a Gwen binder, don't you? Yeah, I have, like I said, I have binders of just about everybody. Some of the players I don't have as many cards of, they'll, I'll put multiple players in a binder, but, uh, yeah, really anyone from, you know, Babe Ruth, all the reprint cards have come out. I'll keep him in binders and, uh, you know, th through the, you know, history, yeah, Steve Carlton, you know, pretty much any major star I pretty much will keep organized in binders. Uh, I don't even really keep much of my common cards. Um, those usually I kind of uh, get rid of. But, uh, yeah, stars I try to keep organized. I got a question for you. It's sort of a follow-up to this. You say you keep things in binders. That's your primary uh, strategy for organization. <laughs> now, 
I did the binder thing probably from 1988 up until, I would say 2010, I did the binder thing. I like to keep things organized, so if I find a card I didn't know existed, or an error card, or some variation, I'd have to do the shuffle and move them all around, and that's why I actually st I, I retired the binder strategy because of that, but I'm pretty OCD with that stuff, so I'm not sure, you might be a little bit more lax, but how do you manage that? I'm OCD like that too, but I actually reversed it. I actually started with the top loads, and I went to the binder system, probably when I had about two or 3,000 bonds, and uh, I like the the viewing uh, pleasure that's involved with having everything organized. And what I did with the issue of shuffling is I already had that checklist with me. So what I would do when I moved that two or 3,000 cards in the binders, I lost spaces for any card I didn't have because I knew that eventually I would acquire the card because that's just my mentality that eventually I'm going to get the card. And then if a card is a high-end card that I'm going to put in a magnetic or, uh, yeah, basically a magnetic, it's not going to go in a binder. Then what I do is I take a filler card. I would I would write the name of the card on the filler and put it in the in the page in the in the appropriate section. So that's how I manage it. But yeah, having if I do find something that doesn't fit where it's supposed to be, then yeah, it has to go to the end of the binder if I get a rare oddball or some something I didn't know of. But I'm fortunate enough to have a pretty good checklist. I don't run across that very often. Pretty incredible. So you went the other way. You went from top loaders to binders. Yeah, I like looking at the binder. Like I said, if you get a uh, parallel and there's 10 different ones, it's nice to look at them all. Um, like I said, if anything's pretty valuable, I like to keep it in a magnetic game use auto, stuff like that. That's going to go in, you know, special top loaders. But, uh, you know, base cards, low end parallel inserts, they, they go in the binders. Yeah. I think it's just nicer to look through. How many binders would you say you have for just Barry Bonds? Uh, probably close to 10. Yeah, I'd say about 10. And how do you have your binders organized? By year and chronologically. Um, so starting with, uh, all the rookie cards are in top loads. So starting with really 88, um, all the way starting with, uh, you know, classic or whatever, the first uh, Bowman chronologically through, uh, you know, Zenith or whatever you want to say. So, yeah, alphabetically and chronologically. That's a great way to do it. I do the same thing. Um, so let me ask you this. Do you have any future plans for your collection? And if so, what are they? Some people here often mention, it, mention an interest in building like a website to showcase their collections or creating some better system of organizing their collections. Um, what are some of your future plans if you have any? Just keep building a bigger and better collection. I want to have the best bonds collection possible. And you know, a lot of guys say, well, I can't, you can't get every one, which is true. I have some one-on-ones. I don't really think of one-on-ones as collecting. It's, it's a masterpiece, so you can't really collect a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you get what you can. I would say my goal is to get every bonds card that's numbered at least 10 or higher. Um, but I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a younger guy. I can hopefully be collecting for a long time yet. Um, so I, there's no rush for me. I'll just keep picking stuff up as I get it, and uh, I just want to keep building a bigger and better collection. So a uh, website would be cool one day. I just don't have time for that nice that catalog, everything with pictures online. Um, but yeah, just keep uh, keep being steady. And, you know, I think a lot of great things we start collecting when we we're young. We didn't have a lot of money working part-time jobs, and that's kind of the, uh, uh, I guess, kind of the, gratitude or feeling you have about your collection is that you started, I started working at a grocery store, but you know, making a couple bucks an hour and I'd spend my money on cards. And, uh, so it's just, people might think, you know, you just have all this money to spend on a collection, but it's pieced over so many years and you just pick stuff up as you can afford it and you move along. So my budget for cards is bigger now that I, you know, working and, uh, working professionally and all that you're older, have a couple extra bucks to spend. So, yeah, just keep at it. I want to keep getting a bigger and better collection. So, In a way, it's an extension of who we are as people, as collectors, right? It's like, it's how we go about our lives. We, we get up, we eat, we go do our work, and then we're, you know, looking for more cards to add to our collection throughout our day. That's just something that we do. It's just part of who we are. 
Right, yeah, and there's, I could never start over and do it again because there's probably cards in my collection, pieces in my collection that will never become available. When Bonds had the you know, 2001 year with 73 home runs, a lot of oddball, weird stuff came out of the woodwork. People knew Barry Bonds was in the paper every day, um, allowed me to pick up a lot of items, so I could never start over and try to do it again because um, you know, a lot of pieces are just one of a kind, even if they're not one of one per se. They're just, they've either been thrown in the trash or they're just, just not available anymore. So, uh, yeah, it's just part of uh, who you are. You kind of have your hobby and you go along and collect. And like I said, it's, a, it's not a race. It's a marathon. It's just a long process. You have a budget. You kind of stick to it. And you get stuff when you can. And uh, there's, there's no rush. You just, you know, take it as it comes, you know. That's great. I love it. Such a great thought. Ben, what was your uh, what was your favorite part of this interview? And do you have any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I could talk Barry Bonds and cards and cards in general all day long. So anytime I get to talk about my collection is great because uh, you know you know as, as a collector, it's not the baseball card uh, hobby. It's you know, I guess there's still kids that do it. It's just kind of there's other things now. There's all the video games and technology now that um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what where what the direction baseball card hobby goes in. Um, but yeah, I said to a lot of people. There's not a lot of uh, uh, people that do it anyways locally. So it's nice to network and with social media now you can branch out and connect with other people that enjoy uh, the hobby as much as you do. So I, I really appreciate uh, the interview. Um, I said I could, something I am passionate about as well as you are. So, uh, yeah, I mean, talk about my collection. It's uh, always a good time. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. I really appreciate this. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate it. Have a good one, buddy. You too. Bye.